one of the passages that has passages that has driven us to ask people to pray in a different way than they have is uh, 2 Corinthians 1, 8 through 11. My paraphrase is this. Uh, I didn't want you to be unaware, brothers, of the hardship that we've endured in Asia. Uh, it got so bad that we thought we were, gonna, we were at the point of death. And this happened that we would not rely on ourselves, but we would rely on God. Um, and that, but he has delivered us from this deadly peril. And he continues to deliver us. And we have set our hope on him. Um, and he, he is delivering us and will deliver us as you help us with your prayers. Then it says, so that many will give thanks for the gracious favor he has bestowed upon us through the prayers of many. So, so one of the things that stood out to me is that I can relate to Paul in that passage. Um, it feels like that you know, we, we're stuck. We're dying here. Um, but then he goes, but God has delivered us and it will continue to deliver us as you help us with your prayers so that lots of people give thanks to God. And, but the, one of the things I realize is that lots of people give thanks to God because he shows up in a different way and, and, and gives his gracious favor to whatever's being prayed for. In that case, it was Paul and his friends. Um, in our case, is that they got where our desire is that lots of people would pray and that many would give thanks because of the gracious favors that was given to my wife and our family um, through the prayers of many. So there's something about God delivering that he can, he can clearly deliver with one person praying. But some, he wants more glory. He wants more people to know and savor the fact that he's great. So what he does is he says, let's a lot of people pray, and then I'll, I'll show up, and then lots of people will give thanks. Um, that's, that's one of the reasons it's prompted us, because ultimately we want him to be seen and savored for all he's worth. Because when, when things get stripped away, as your community has ex experienced in the last several weeks, you realize that there's... There's got to be something else. The, the Second Corinthians passage that I just was talking about is part of a thing that, that God put on my heart as I was getting people to pray for my wife. Um, there's three Ds. It deals with dependence, determination, and uh, de desperation. And, and God wants us to be all three of those um, because, because it, it, again, it points away from us and to Him because when you're dependent, you're, you're saying, I can't do it. Uh, when you're determined to go after him, for him to show up, then you're still saying, I can't do it, I, I'm, but, I'm, but I'm going really intensely to the one that can do something. And then the third is, de is desperation, is that, that you're realizing that there's no other place that will provide exactly what is needed that I, that I can go to. Um, so the, the idea is praying in 3D three-dimensionally, but it's still pointing every, every bit, pointing to, to the provision that comes from God. Uh, the other two passages um, it are, uh, one is, is Matt, excuse me, Mark chapter 2, where the paralytic, you've got the four guys that are carrying the paralytic to Jesus. Um, and there's a number of other guys that are following along and they get there and it's too crowded and they can't get in and so they go up on the roof and they dig through, they, the rubble falls down and they lower him in front of Jesus. Jesus looks at their faith and heals him. And what stands out to me is that their determination was incredible to, to get their buddy to Jesus. And so when I look at that, I'm thinking, what would it be like if people in different parts of the United States, different parts of the region, um, when they got down on their knees before they went to bed, they prayed for my wife, and that God would look at their faith, and next thing you know, <laughs> she's healed. That to me is exciting, that, that God works that way. That it's not just if Rhonda can be enough, if she can just do a little more, if she can be something better, then I'll, I'll, I'll pay attention and I'll do something for her. But it could be some, it could be a 10th grader at Ringgold High School that kneels before the Father and, and he sees their faith and my wife gets healed. 
I mean, it's, it could be that, is that clear, that powerful, and, and it's clear right there in Scripture, but it's determination. It's, it's doing whatever it takes to bring the person to Jesus in prayer. Because those buddies, they weren't going to stop. Oh, they got to the front door. Oh, it's full. Sorry. You know, I guess you're going to have to stay, remain a paralytic a little bit longer because it's not, <laughs> we can't get in. Um, they did whatever it took. That's the determination factor. The other factor is Matthew uh, 7, 7 through 12. And you know, everybody knows this passage where it says, Ask and you'll receive, seek and you'll find, knock and the door will be open to you. And then it goes on and says, Because everybody that asks receives, everybody that seeks finds, everybody that knocks the door is open to them. Um, and then it goes, it switches a little bit and it talks about now when you ask your, it makes it personal, when you ask your father, if, so, if your son asks you for a fish, you don't give him a, a serpent, a snake. If he asks you for bread, you don't give him a rock. And then, he, then it shifts again and it says, well, if you being evil, talking to his disciples even, if you being evil know how to give good gifts, how much more will your Heavenly Father give good gifts to them who ask him? Then he makes a shift. And this is the verse that God is, is planting in my heart in part of the 3D. Is that the very next verse, everybody, every believer knows it. And most non-Christians know it. It's the golden rule. But the golden rule is usually quoted about you know, treating people the way you want to be treated. But Jesus has put it right, right in the middle of a context of prayer. He goes, the way that you want people to pray for you, pray for them. And I tell you what, when I'm desperate, I want people not to offer up casual prayer. I want them to go to it. I want them to be intense. I want them to, to cry out to God on my behalf. Because that's how I feel I, I need. That's what I feel like I need. And so when I think, think about those three pieces here, the dependency is that our, we've set our hope on God. We, that's the Second Corinthians passage. The determination passage is the Mark chapter 2 passage. And then the, the desperation passage is the, the, the way that you would want somebody to pray for you, pray for them. Because we know what it feels like to be desperate. And we know when we're desperate, we don't want somebody to say, oh yeah, don't forget them. We want somebody to cling to them. Because if you're desperate you're gonna, and somebody's got what you need, you're going to grab hold of them until that you get it.